All right, what's up guys? So today I'm back with another video installing the uh, trim pieces around the windows and uh, around the doors, door seals. It actually needed it a lot because uh, when I went to the car wash, I got a lot of uh, water inside the door. It's a good thing, you know, it was designed to leak out the bottom. But yeah, so I used the, that trim black paint. It came out incredibly well. Um, you know, like the texture is different from these to these, but who really cares? And uh, one thing I noticed about these trim pieces is that if you can see right there, that little piece was the uh, was the part that's inside of that um, boot rubber piece that covers up the hinge. And originally, these pieces are actually very smooth but throughout the years of baking in the sun they turn this textured feel and I actually thought that this was like the natural feel of these but that's how they look originally and I did not know that so because most Integras you know if are like this unless you bought them new so I'm gonna um, install these but I'm gonna do it a little bit different way you can see right here that like it's a little groove right there and right here is like a little tongue so it's a little tongue in groove way that these go in you just gotta uh, move these tabs like this and match them up to these clips right here but um, I already had this one fly off on me on the highway and that one was actually pretty uh, stable. But what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna put a dab of silicone in these little grooves right here and right there, right there, right here and so on. And so when this little tongue goes in between the groove, it's gonna um, dry up and just hold it in there permanently because I don't want these things to uh, fly off. And in the past, I've actually had these rip off when I was uh, drying the car you know the, the microfiber whatever get snagged and it'll just pull it right off so once you take these things off uh, they usually just come off easy but this time I'm gonna uh, prevent that and there's a scratch right there of when it flew off on the highway I just noticed that the other day but hopefully I can um, hopefully I can buff that out or uh, sand it out cut it when I when I start the, the paint correction on this and uh, you know cut and buff Hopefully I can get this out. So, all right. So you could see right here how it actually has those little notches right there, and those just go in there. It's like a one-way deal, kind of like a uh, zip tie. Once it clicks in, it doesn't really come out. So like this broke. If you want to take these off, just uh, know that you're gonna risk breaking stuff after it's over 15 years old. So um, so yeah. So I put a little dab of silicone here 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 and here now I gotta grab the trimming and line them up that's where the other broken piece is at this one would be enough to hold it line these up and it'll click right into place make sure it goes into this little tongue right here and uh, it'll go right in all right so I finally got it installed and besides uh, little scratches here and there from when it ripped off and uh, fingerprints it's starting to look a lot more complete. I'm going to continue on to the next side and put these uh, these trim pieces back in. Alright, so there it is. Next trim piece in. Doors complete. Oh, and the wings back on. With a filthy um, run in the paint, I got to um, sand out. And this one's in so next thing I'm gonna discuss right here are the um, the mirrors the spoon mirrors quote-unquote spoon sport mirrors and I'm just gonna give a little brief discussion why I don't like them I put this type of film on there to make it look uh, like the authentic uh, blue lens that's on the real mirrors.
but I'm gonna throw these on the car and I'm gonna um, show you the big downside to having these mirrors. The people that I've asked about, the people that I've asked uh, about these mirrors, asking advice like, are they good, are they bad? They all said um, they're good mirrors, but visibility sucks um, and it's horrible, can't see, but post after post, they still have, um, have them on their car and they're still driving around with them. So I'm like, well, they can't be that bad if they, they, you know, keep having them on their car. So I took the chance. I got them for 30 bucks. I'm going to throw them on, on my car. I'm going to hook them up and I'm going to show you uh, what's wrong with them. Okay, so I got them installed. I just have one screw put in. It's that one. And these are like wood screws too. So I don't know why they have wood screws. But um, I just plug these in and... As you can see, they work. Uh, yeah, well, that's actually moving kind of slow, but they're moving. And for 30 bucks, I'm actually surprised they got, you know, an actual functioning power mirror. So that's how they look. I mean, it doesn't look bad at all. More aerodynamic. Loads and loads lighter. It actually kind of looks like the 6th gen Civic mirrors. I've always thought these look like them. But um, yeah, they, they're not bad. The finish is not bad. The way they go around the molding, it's not bad. But uh, there's just uh, two things wrong with them. Okay, so inside the car, and there's a mirror. I'm gonna adjust as best as possible. I'm also gonna push it right here because I really don't care for these mirrors. So I'm pushing it right there, and that's it. And this is at eye's length right here. Like this is like what you'll see in your car. So when you go over, you have to look down. Like you'll literally have to put your face to the door handle to look out if you're merging onto the freeway and about to hit that semi that you're uh, merging into. That mirror is up, and you can see the rear quarter panel, the tip of it, and this right here. All you see is uh, the door, the bottom of the door. So that's the reason why I, I cannot use them. I've already taken out this glass right here. I can put some type of like wedge in between to give me more direction to go that way. So it'll actually be going that way, um, but. I'm not even gonna go through the th go through the hassle. Visibility does suck. They are useless without modifications. And uh, yeah, but uh, thankfully it was only 30 bucks. It's not the end of the world. I know that they have uh, other spoon replicas for a couple hundred dollars um, that are not the authentic ones, but they're uh, they're better than these. And I really highly doubt that those are any better than these unless you just go 100% authentic. So yeah, so visibility does suck. If you do read about it, they're not good. And if you do have good visibility, you got a good batch. All right, so uh, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you think about the car. What do you want to see next? What should I do? Any advice? Um, I know like progress is slow, but you know good things don't happen overnight and uh you just got to take your time be patient be calm and yeah it should be uh it should look killer when it's when it's done so uh so yeah so any suggestions on anything i should change or whatever or i should add just uh let me know and i know you're thinking about these wheels the color those that's gonna get addressed pretty soon so so yeah so uh thanks for watching all right, what's up guys so uh today is a nice uh day out a little bit overcast and um lately it's been kind of hot to uh paint anything not because you know the panel was gonna be too hot but it's just uh unbearable to be under the sun for so long especially with no shade so today i'm gonna take off the lip and um spray it
the only downside is that I only have this spot right here to do it and I really have no um, no place to really hold it up at you know but um, I'll try to make do I'll try to get like a trash can or something to hold it on there and uh, hopefully I can accomplish this today and let's see uh, let's see how this goes but uh, yeah I want this lip to be painted because I'm tired of just looking at this thing just looks incomplete but yeah so let's do this all right so I got the lip propped up on a chair right here I'm gonna put a piece of plastic over um, this right here so I don't get overspray on it and as far as uh, and as much as it looks ghetto this is gonna uh, do because it's my only option right now and uh, I'm gonna be doing this with the spray can I'm not really looking for longevity I'm just looking to put some color on it so and then like later on down the line if there's any chips or something I could easily just touch it up but yeah so let's get this thing in some color all right so I got the lip washed down I cleaned it with some all-purpose cleaner so now I'm practically uh, watching water dry and uh, it's kind of cool out so it might take a while but uh, once this is uh, fully dry primer base coat and clear coat all right so it's actually pretty much a huge fail I'm not home right now and uh, I forgot the damn primer so this right here is gonna have to wait unfortunately but I did get uh, this in place good seal and uh, let's see how it looks pretty good all the way across it could probably be stretched out a little bit right here but that's really coming together looking original like the way I want it to be all right what's up guys so I'm right here at the market and uh, I hear a weird noise hear this this crap I don't know what that is so it looks like I have some investigating to do but it kind of seems like I need an axle because my axle is making a lot of noise the new axle I put in but I don't know if uh, an axle will make that type of noise while turning what the hell Kind of sounds like a upper or lower ball joint like a like metal is actually like binding up the the inner cv shaft it's already making that clunking noise because you know i drive my car spiritedly and you know aggressively so i already have that clunking so i'm gonna get beefier axles but i don't know if the inner cv joint actually moves while the car is not in motion All right, this sucks, so yeah, Doing a quick little valve lash adjustment. Gotta put um, those two marks up and up facing up for cylinder one TDC. I put an extension down to the piston just to make sure. This is the exhaust side. 
it should be between seven and eight. And I'm putting a nine in there. And as you can see, nine goes right in. So that freaking sucks. These valves are all out of adjustment. When I got the car, it was purring like a kitten. And as I started driving it more and more, they got out of spec, started sounding like a sewing machine. Let me check this side. This is a nine that I'm putting in, so a nine doesn't fit. Yeah, so. And then over here on the intake side, the specs are supposed to be between six and seven. So I'm gonna whip out the seven. Let's see what is this, that's an eight. Six and seven, so I'm gonna put an eight in there. And let me see if uh, an eight will fit. Because if an eight fits, the biggest that's supposed to go in is a seven snugly. Let me see, okay. So yeah, so right here, an eight does not fit, so. This is not too bad. I'm gonna stick a seven in there. And if a seven fits snugly, uh, that's about the, the the most tolerance it should take for the intake. But definitely the, the, uh, the exhaust is out. So that you gotta rotate the crank. I rotate it right here and just take the plugs out. No more compression. Turn it at the pump instead of at the crank. Cylinder two, TDC. Check these right here. Cylinder 3, TDC, check right here.